we are going to start with the proc step. You know what you mean by proc step? If you start our program with the keyword of proc, we call that as a proc step. You know why we use the proc step? The major purpose of proc step is data analysis. And data reporting. Data analysis and data reporting. So these are the two important reasons why we use, you know, proxy. But sometimes we also use data. Data we also access use a proxy data management. for access management also. You know, from the next one month, what and all we are going to discuss about the proxy step. I'm going to divide this proxy step into the following. You know, the first one is we use the proxy step for data access and utility. Data access and the data utility processes. In the data access and data utility processes, we are going to discuss about you know proc copy processor, and we are going to discuss about proc delete processor. We are going to discuss about proc import. We have already seen. We are going to see one more time, and we are going to discuss about proc export, and then we are going to discuss about you know proc sort. We are going to discuss about proc contents, and then we are going to discuss about proc options then we are going to discuss about proc transpose and then we are going to discuss about um, copy delete import export we are going to discuss about the proc format and we are going to discuss about proc rank and we will discuss about you know proc data sets and and then we will discuss about the proc print to and then we will discuss about proc c port and then we will discuss about proc import. And of course, we have simple processes like proc signature, proc signature, and we will discuss a proc pw encode. And we have one more processor called proc append. So these are the proc step we will discuss in the first half. Then after that, we are going to discuss about you know analysis and reporting processes. Analysis and reporting procedures in the analysis and reporting processors we will discuss about you know we are going to discuss about proc print and we are going to discuss about proc report and we are going to discuss about proc you know um, means procedure we will discuss about proc summary procedure and we will discuss about proc frequency and then we will discuss about proc tablate and then we will discuss about you know we will discuss about proc univariate and uh, we'll discuss about the proc correlation and then we'll discuss about the proc regression and then we'll discuss about uh, you know proc life test and these are the some of the analysis and reporting procedures and then we'll discuss about the graphical procedures or the graphical procedures in the graphical procedures we are going to discuss about the proc you know g proc g plot and we'll discuss about you know proc sg plot and then we will discuss about ods in the ods we have only one concept that is ods and this is the whole you know proc step so the next 20 25 days these are the processes that we are going to discuss okay clear everybody Okay. Yes, and in today's class, yes, we are going to discuss about the first procedure, you know, proc copy. Why we use the proc copy procedure? Proc copy procedure is useful to copy SAS files from, from one library to another library. One library to the library. Why we use the proc copy procedure? It is useful to copy SAS files from one library to another library. So, for example, now tell me in the SAS help library, we have a data set called class. I want to copy that into work library. What you will do? From the SAS help into work library, I want to copy the class data set. What is the program that you will write? Data class set SAS help class. Uh -huh. And if you select the program, execute the program, now what is the data set that we have that you will have in the work library? In the work library, you will have a class set. 
Uh, now I want to copy cost data set. I want to copy cost data set. What you will do? You will write up again that, data. Uh, that, that I want me. other cost data set, cost, semicolon. Then what you will do? Set dot cost. Help dot cost. Now, imagine I want to copy hot data set. I want to copy baseball data set. I want to copy snack data set. And I want to copy fish data set. I want to copy gas data set. I want to copy A data set. And I want to copy hard data set. In this way, today, I want to copy 50 data sets from one library to another library. So, how many times you should at the program? 50 times. It's going to be very hectic task, no? Can't we copy all the 50 data sets in one go? Yes, we can do that. But if we want to copy multiple data sets in one step, we use now a processor called proc copy. Proc copy. In is equal to from which library you want to copy. And then you should write out is equal to to which library you want to copy. Now keep okay. SME column. Now write the wrong step. So I want to copy from the SAS help library. Help library. Now I'm going to specify, you know, proc copy in is equal to SAS help. Out is equal to, I want to copy all this into a library called Srini. But at this moment, do we have a Srini library? No, sir. We do not have a Srini library. But I want to copy all this into Srini library. So first of all, you should have a Srini library. Tell me how to create a Srini library. First of all, if you want to create library, we should have a folder. 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 Have a folder first. Uh, I'm going to create a folder right. now. Yes, sir. I'm giving, you know, right click new folder. And I want to have folder name as an A, say for example, my data. So I'm going to get this folder path, shift, right click. Copy as yes, path. Copy as path. Go to the program. Then how to create a library? Name. If I select this one line, if I put this one line, now I'll have a library called Srini. Now, pro copy in is equal to from library, which is SAS help, out is equal to Srini. You know what? If I select this program and execute this program, what are all the SAS files that we have in the help library? all the SAS files will be get copied. So since we are going to have so many files in the help library, to copy all these files, it will take some time. So what do you mean by SAS file? Do you know SAS file? In the starting, when we are discussing about the libname, I told you, in a SAS library, we can find four types of SAS files. What are the four types of SAS files you can find? Data sets, view files, sets, catalogs. View files, catalogs, and MDDB files. Remember? Data sets, view files, catalogs, and MDDB files. All these four files are called SAS files. You know, when I execute this program, proc copy in is equal to SAS helper, out is equal to Srini. You know what will happen? All the SAS type, all SAS files will be get copied from help library into Srini library. You know, that means all the data sets, views, catalogs, and MD, everything will be get copied. Now see, if I open the Srini library, oh, these are the things that we have in the Srini library. Can you see? We have data sets, we have catalogs, and if I go down, we are going to have an MDDB files, and then we are going to have, can you see MDDB files? And then we have even SAS views also. If we have in a SAS, you know, Srini library, that means where we have all these now, it has been saved into my data folder on the desktop. Can you see? All these files from help library into Srini library, it has been copied. Can you see this one? So this is how we can copy SAS files from one library to another library. Now, you know what? I do not want to copy all the files. I want to copy only the data sets. 
I want to copy only the data sets. If you want to copy only the data sets, this is the program I'm writing. I am writing pro copy in is equal to SAS help, then out is equal to, you know, out is equal to Srini. You know, then what I'm writing? Now I'm writing the run. You know, if I input this program again, what will happen? All the SAS files will be get copied, right? All the SAS files. But I do not want to have all the SAS files. I want to have only data sets. Okay. Now, if you want to have only data sets, you know what we should do? Now we should have a new option called, you know, mem type is equal to, and then member type is equal to data. So that means I do not want to copy all the SAS files. I want to copy only the data sets. Now, see, if I select the program and execute the program, now in a minute, all the data sets from the help library that will be get copied into what library. Can you see? Now we are going to have only the data sets, no other files. Can you see this one? Can we copy to um, work library? Yes, it has been copied. You can copy it. Now, if you want to copy it into work library, then what we should do? We should write proc copy. In is equal, In is equal to, to SAS help. Out is out equal is to work. work. Now, if you want to copy only data sets, what I should write now? Mem type is equal to data. Now, keep a semicolon run. Now, if I go this program, then what will happen? All the data sets will be get copied from help library into which library? Work library. Work library. Work library. Work library. Into what library? Understand this one? Now I'm deleting all the data sets in a Srini library. Now control A, delete, enter. But now you know what I want to do? I want to copy only view files. I do not want to have a data sets or catalogs. Now, if you want to copy only view files, this is the program you will write. Proc copy in is equal to SAS help library, then out is equal to Srini library, then mem type is equal to view. If I write mem type is equal to, then what will happen now? It will it is going to copy only the view file. View files are dummy. You know that one, it will not have any data, it is going to have only variables. And like after this, only view file. Can you see? Since view files are, you know, since it doesn't have any data, it's going to be easy, very fast. You can copy from help library into Srini library. Understand this one? Yes, sir. Now, in the same way, I want to copy only catalogs. I'm deleting all the view files now. I want to copy only catalog. If you want to catalogs, if you want to copy catalog, then what I should do? You should write pro copy in is equal to, you know, SAS help library out is equal to, I am writing separate examples in the library. This time I am writing mem type is equal to catalog. Oh, I am specifying mem type is equal to catalog. Run. If I select the program and execute the program, you know what will happen? Only the catalogs will be get copied. Catalogs are very huge in memory. So it will take a lot of time to copy them. Now, can you see? Now we have only the catalogs, no data sets, no view files, only the catalog. So this is how we can select a specific type of files. You can copy any one type of file. Now tell me, I want to copy all the data sets from help library into work library. Then what you will do? Only data sets. Um, rock copy in um, data. Copy out in is equal to in is equal to SAS help. Out is equal to what? I want to copy it into say library. Then what should I write to um, data? Now what will happen if I execute this program? Now I'm selecting this one, executing this program. Now you get all the data sets. But you know what? I do not want to have all the data sets. I want to have 
only few data sets. Now, if you want to copy only few data sets, then what you should do? Now, I am writing, you know, from, from copy. In is equal to sarcel. Then out is equal to, I am writing, so for example, Srini. Mem type is equal to data. So if I execute this program, what will happen? You will get all the data sets, right? But I do not want to have all the data sets. I want to have only few data sets. Now, if you want to have only few data sets, now you should write a statement called select. So that means when you are copying the data sets from help library into screen library, what are the data sets that you want to copy? I want to copy a data set. I want to copy by data set. I want to copy cost data set. And I want to copy class. And I want to copy baseball. I want to copy rent. I want to copy return. And I want to copy snacks. I want to copy heart. And I want to copy, say, for example, gas. And I want to copy fish. And I want to copy, say, for example, lake. So these are the sum of the data set. You know how many data I specified? And I specified 12 data sets. Now, if I select this program and execute the program, you know what will happen? Only these 12 data sets will be get copied. So, when you're copying the data set from one library to another library, if you want to copy only selected data sets, if you want to select a few data sets, what is the statement that you will write now? We will write select statement. So, select statement is going to select the files which you want to copy. Understand this one? So you won't get all the data sets now. You'll get only the full data sets. Okay. All of these data sets, sir, which you can find in the help library, just I'm copying all these data sets from help library into screen library. Clear everybody? No. Can you see? I have a screen library. In a screen library, how many data sets I have? Twelve data sets. Yeah. You know, out of twelve data sets, sir, I want to copy ten data sets. I do not want to have rent and retail. So if you want to copy all the 10 data sets, what is the program that you will write now? By the way, I want to copy from screen library to work library. Tell me what the program you should write. Pro copy. In is equal to from which library you want to copy? Screen library. Out is equal to, to which library you want to copy? Work library. Mem type is equal to what I want to copy? Only data sets, so mem type is equal to data. Now, if you write a select statement, now how many data sets you should write now? I want to have 10 out of 12. So if you want to have a 10, if you write a select statement, you should write all the 10, right? That is going to be very hectic task. Now, instead of the select statement, now we can write a statement called exclude. What you do not want to have, I do not want to have a rent, and I do not want to have a retail. Now I'm writing the wrong statement. Now, if I select the program and if I input the program, now I'm going to have, how many lessons I'm going to have in the one library you now? 10 data sets. How many? I'm going to have 10 data sets. Ten. Can you see? I have all the 10 data sets except those rent and retail. Is this clear? Sir. Yes. Clear everybody? Okay. Yes, so sir. this is called pro copy. Now tell me one more time why we use the pro copy processor? Anybody? To copy SAS files uh, from one uh, library to another library. Another library. Very good. What is the basic procedure that we can write? Prop copy. Prop copy. In, in equals to from library. Mm -hmm. Out is so, equals to in library. 
But if you want to copy only selected data sets, what is the statement you will write? Select statement. If you want to select a few data sets, if you want to exclude few data sets, then what, you will do, what is the statement that you will write? Exclude statement. Okay. So this is called proc copy in the real time. When you when they are assigning any work, the first thing they are going to do for the current task, what are the data sets that you require? They are going to put all the data sets in one folder and this is called the raw folder or original folder. They will tell you in which folder you have all the required data sets for the current task. The raw data set may have 100 data sets, but you do not require all the 100 data sets for current task. You may require only 10 data sets for your current task. Then what you should do? Now so you will create good. you will create a library to this raw folder, and you will create forever folder also. You create one more library. Then what you will do? By writing a proc copy processor in from library, you will specify this library to library. You will specify your library, and then select you will write the required data sets. Mem type is equal to data. So what and all the data sets that you require. You will get all the data sets into your library, which means all those will come into your folder. Now you will work only on these 10 data sets. Understand this one? So the first thing that you are going to do in the real time, you will write the proc copy processor and you will get all the required data sets for the current task into your library, then you will start writing the program. So proc copy is a very common processor that we use in the real time. Clear this one? Yes. Okay. The next processor that we have is, you know, proc delete. You know, so far, whenever you want to delete any data set, how you will delete any data set, by the way? If you do not want to have some data set, you will select the data set and you are going to click on the delete button. They are going to enter on the OK button. Now the data set will get deleted. Or otherwise, you know, select the data set, give a right click, and delete. Okay? Enter. So if you want to delete all the data sets, select Control plus A, click on the delete button, click on the enter button. If somebody asked you, where are these data sets? What you would say? You said that like, and you deleted it, right? But if I ask you, how did you delete that one? Show me the proof. Do you have a proof for delete this deletion? No, because uh, simply click on the control plus A, then you click on the delete button, enter button, all the message has been deleted. If somebody asked you what you did, you will not have any clue for that one, any proof. But in the real time, if you do anything, you, have, you should have a documentation. That means you should have a proof. You should have a programming proof. Now, how we can do this? So if you want to delete any data set, now we use a processor called proc delete. Understand this one? Now, we'll see about the proc delete. Now, so I want to copy a few data sets from help library into work library. So if you want to copy what the processor you will write, Raw copy in is equal to sample library out is equal to I want to copy it in a work library. But I want to copy only few data sets. I'm going to select here. I want to have air, I want to have a buy, I want to have separate example cars, I want to have a class, I want to have separate example baseball, I want to have heart, and I want to have separate example snacks, I want to have fish, I want to have lake, and I want to have shoes. Okay, 
and I want to have rent, I want to have retail, I want to have gas. These are the sum of the data sets. I want to have no, I have written all the required data sets in the search statement. Now I'm selecting this program and I'm executing on the, you know, enter button, run button. Can you see? I have 12 data sets. Now I want to delete a data set. So to delete, it, to delete a data set, what we should write? Now I'm writing proc, delete, semicolon, run. This is the simplest procedure that you can write. You know what? If I execute this program, what will happen? By default, it will delete the data set. It will delete the data set from work library. From work library. And by default, it will delete the most recently created data set. But can you tell me what is the most recently created data set that we have in the work library? Yes. 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 Now we are creating a bus cards. Out of the 12, the most recently created data yeah. set is one. It's nice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But because when I do the proc copy process, that is the last data set that we have in the select statement, right? Now see, now if I select this program and if I execute this program, now it will delete only the gas data set. So that means when you execute the proc delete procedure, by default, it will delete the most recently created data set of default library. What is the default library? Default is a work library. Now my question is, if I execute the same prop delete processor, this time what will happen? Retail. Deleted. See, I'm selecting the program, executing the program. Nothing has been deleted. I'll go to the log window. Now this is the warning I'm getting. Can you see warning? Work dot gas data does not exist. So that means sir, when you execute the proc deleter, it will execute only one time and it will execute only the most recently created. But if you execute the same program, now what we get? You will get a warning data saying that the gas data set doesn't exist in the work library because it's already deleted. But if you want to delete a specific data set, you know what you should do? You should write you now proc delete data is equal to data set name. Now this time I want to delete, say for example, fish data set. So proc delete data is equal to fish, semicolon run. Now selecting this program, execute this program. Now can you see, now specifically it delete fish data set. But I want to delete, you know, both shoes and snacks. I want to delete two data sets. If you want to delete two data sets, now I'm writing proc delete. Data is equal to what are the data set I want to delete? I want to delete shoes. Shoes and under. Under. Shoes, and shoes space snacks. Now select the program and execute the program. Now both the assets will be deleted. But if you want to delete all the data sets of work library, you know what you should do? If you want to delete all the data sets, now you should write a proc delete. Proc delete. Now data is equal to work dot underscore all underscore. With this program, you know what? It will delete now all the data sets. So if you want to delete all the data sets of a library, what you should do? You should write a proc delete. Data is equal to library name dot underscore or underscore. Understand this one? Now in the Srini library, I have 12 data sets. Now I want to delete all the 12 data sets of Srini library. Now what you should do? Now okay. You should proc delete. Data is equal to Srini dot. Srini dot underscore all, all underscore. Now, what it will do now? It will delete all the data sets from Srini library.
Understand this one? By the way, proc delete can delete only SAS data sets. It cannot delete views or it cannot delete catalogs. It can delete only the data sets. Understand this one? Yes, sir. This is called a proc delete. Now, the next procedure that we have is, you know, proc set it. It displays. SAS licensing information in the log window. A SAS licensing information in the log window. So if you want to see the SAS licensing information in the log window, we use a proc set in the processor. You know, I'm using the SAS version. I want to know what are the packages that I have in this version? When this package, when this SAS is going to get expired, I want to check all that information. I want to know what is my licensing information that I have in my in the main laptop, SAS licensing information. If you want to know that one, now we are going to use a processor called proc set in it. Set in it, say we call and run. Now, if I select this program and I put the program, now in the log window, it is going to print all the licensing information. This is the licensing information that I have. Can you read this carefully? The original site validation data, current version is SAS 9.4. Okay, this is the code that we have. Site name, University of California system. San Francisco or something, and we have TN dot and site name, and we have a site number. This is the site number I have. And uh, expiration when my SAS license is going to get expired. Can you see this one? When my SAS license is going to get expired, June 30. June 30. June 30. But immediately, can you see me explain what we have? Grace period. Grace. 40, 40, 40, 40. Okay. Including the grace period, it is going to ending on 14th August 2022. And again, I have 45 days warning period. If I include that warning period, can you see when my SAS license is going to get expired? 28th September 28th September 2022. So that means up to 28th September 2022, I can use this version. Understand this one? What if after the 20th September, what will happen? If you want to open this SaaS software after the 20th September 2022, it will not be get open until unless you keep your system time date before the 20th September 2022. So that means if I want if I want to open the SIS, this SaaS software on 29th September 2022, you know what should I do? I should keep my system data before 28th September 2022. Then only the SaaS software will be get opened in my system. You know, if you guys are practicing SaaS in Stansys server, are you ever observed that what is the date that you will get in the server? Did you observe the date? Yes, sir. 2015 uh, February. 2015 February. Because whatever the SaaS software they installed in the server, it was expired in 2015. So that's why in the server they will keep the Windows, you know, system time before 2015 February. So then only you can okay, you can open the SaaS software in the server. And the miracle today function or sir and What is the date you get? You will get 2015 February 9 or something. Understand this one? So they have taken this license on 21st June 2022. That is the system birth rate. 
and uh, they took this one for you know windows 64 bit workstation and when you take the sas license what are the packages that you will get can you see you'll get a 30th of you know i'm getting the base SAS software i'm getting say for example sas stat 6 this is the sas stat 6 and i got the sas graphs and i got the sas ets tool and fsp tool and you got sas or and i have af iml i get all these packages these are the basic package that you will get whenever you purchase a SaaS license. Understand this one? All these packages are going to get expired on 30th June, but I have a 45 days end warning period and I have a 45 days grace period. With the 90 days, it is going to get expired on 28th September 2022. Understand this one? Yes, sir. You know, in the real time, if you are working in a small company, SaaS company, so if there are like you know 10, 15 SaaS programmers, so you 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 have to do everything. But in big companies, if there are 100 SaaS programmers, along with the SaaS programmer, there is going to be a role called SaaS admin. How we are learning base advance in the same way. We have a separate course for SAS admin also. So what these SAS admins will do? The SAS admins will, will give you, you know, user permissions, the library permissions, data permissions. They're going to take care of all those, you know, administrative things. If a SAS license has been expired, as I said, you cannot open the SAS with the current date. Then what you should do? Your manager. You know, you'll pay the money to the SaaS company. We have in India a SaaS company in Pune. Now the SaaS company, if you might pay the money to SaaS Pune, and then they will send you the licensing information in a text file. All the licensing information they will share in a text file. Okay? And that text file, we call it as an SID file. This is nothing but a SaaS installation document or software installation document. And it is just a text file. And this is how that SID file is going to look like. Can you see here what we have? SID file. Can you take? Can you look this one? They have taken this for which version? SAS 9.4. And for the platform, they have taken this one for Microsoft Windows Workstation for 64 bit. And the platform short name is Windows X 64 bit. And we have an order number here, license product, and we have you know set number ID, and we have a schema, and then we have an agreement information. And we have all that information. Then can you see after that what is the information that we have? Here we have statement information. You know, some people they have taken this license for University of California system, San, San Francisco or something. And I don't know who uploaded this SID file on the internet. Somebody has been uploaded this file onto the internet from the University of California. Now, people like us downloaded this software and we are using this SID file as our license. In the real time, if you want to take a license, SAS, base SAS license for four programmers for one year, it will cost you around eight lakhs for four programmers. SAS is very expensive. I don't know why they have they done this one. Somebody has been uploaded. When I'm surfing on the internet, I got this file and I'm using, I think most of you guys, if you Install get installed SAS software through stances. Okay. And you might have get this one also. You might have using the same system. Do you teach SAS Do you teach SAS admin also? No. Yeah, I know that but uh, we have a separator in our company, we have a separator role and they do that. Uh, Hello? Yes. 
understand this one? And these are the products that you got through SAS. And now can you see here we have a birth date and we have an expiration date, we have a password, warning period, 45 days, grace period, 45, period, 45 days, and we have all that information here. Understand this one? And we have all the packages, product number, code, and what is that product, and we have all this. Information. This is called SID file. Clear everybody? You know, previously, I used to use this SID file. Can you see? When this expired, this expired, uh, what do you call SID file has been expired? Than 14, 2015, you know, in September. So, if you want to use this SID file in your system, your system date must be before 14 September 2015. So, if you are using this SID file, if you keep your system before 2015 September, then only this will be get open. Understand this one? I used to use this file also before this one. Can you say when the, when this has been expired? 31st March. 31st March, 31st 2021. So if you want to use this SID file in your system, every time you should keep your system data before 31st March 2022. Then only you should keep 7th April 2021 to 31st March 2020. In between only those two days, then only we can open this as software. Understand this one? Now, say for example, you your license has been expired and you paid the money to SAS India and then you purchase the SAS software next for the next one year. Now, how to renew the SAS software in your system? How to renew it? You know, if you want to renew the SAS software in your system, you know what you should do? First of all, you should close the SAS software in our you know what you should do? You have to close it. So I'm closing the SAS software. Then, once you close the SAS software, go to the left side, you know, start button here. And you should give a keyword called, you know, renew SAS software, R-E-N-E-W, renew SAS software. When you give the renew SAS software, you're going to have an app like this one. You should open that app. And you will get it. Do you want to allow this app make make changes? Yes, I want to make changes. So click on this. Then it will ask you in a moment where you have that file. I should not get this one. Now it will ask you where you have that SID file. You know, do you know where I have the SID file? Browse. I have in my D drive. Go to the D drive. In the D drive, go to this PC. Go to the D drive. In the D drive, I have SAS 9.4 folder. In the SAS 9.4 folder, folder, this is the SID file I'm having with the current system date. Now keep that, select that one, click on that open. Okay, now click on that next button. It will ask you apply the SAS foundation license for the renewal. Yes, I want to do that. Start. Now can you see? Now we should click on the next button. Now it will show you finish. Now everything we have. Now if you open the SAS software, now it will be get open. That means a renew. Our process has been successfully updated. Now we have the new license. Now we can work on this one. This is how we are going to renew the SAS software. Understand this one?
Is this clear, everybody? For renewal, we don't have to pay money, sir. That's what you should pay the money. Then only they are going to send you a SID file. When you have a SID file license, SID file with the current date, so you can do the renewal process by your mom. So this is what this is about the proc setting it. In today's class, we have seen three processes. One is a proc copy, and then we have seen proc delete, and we have seen another processor called proc. Proc setting it. Okay, and we'll see the remaining processes in tomorrow's class. Sir. Yes. Every time I'm changing my data, sir, to use in the laptop. So that's what okay. if you have that's what if you if you have if you are using old SID file no. So whenever you want to open the SAS software, what is the data you are keeping in your system? Every time. What is the data you are keeping? Before day. Yeah, we we system data it better SAS open your setup. April seventh. Uh, April seventh, two thousand twenty-two, na? Sir, yeah, April seventh, two thousand twenty-one. Ne, ne, probably go. Ne, probably go. Ne, pambi chane gada. Ne, enta di. Ne, probably chubin chane gada. Renewal process so. Ne, ne, SID file lo ne, ne, probably. Hmm. SID file nangan ko WhatsApp lo kani ko nishan lo ko ne. Can you, can you renew the SAS software? Yes, sir. Do it, oh, okay, na? Okay. Then. See you tomorrow. So please paste the notes in the chat box, sir. Please. Um, I close the SAS software to show the renewal process. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thanks. Sir. Yes. Is there any file in the file that you just got, sir? Ah, yes. Renewal process. Look. एवरना यूज एप्डी फैल सैप्टर ट्वेंटी लूज